Okay, so in chapter three, we're gonna start solving some more differential equation problems. However, these are gonna be typically of order two, okay? In the last chapter, we were doing mostly just order one, right? You only had y prime, and then you were having to solve the DE. In this section, you'll have double prime, okay? So you can see, excuse me, you can see like on example one and example two, they have the DE here on the right-hand side, and you'll notice that in both of those, have a double prime right we just kind of want to get your brain turning and thinking about double prime differential equations okay when you had a single prime all you had was one initial condition right that's all you had when you had a single prime but now that you have a double prime you're gonna have to have two initial conditions the original y value at a certain x value and then it's prime value at that same x value, okay? So notice that the x values are the same, right? But the y values may differ depending on what the functions are, okay? But you have to have two initial conditions when you have a double prime. That's essentially the big idea in this section. That's all they're trying to introduce you to. So in this first section, all they're asking you to do is basically find the c's. And that's it for this section okay we're not doing anything crazy <laughs> we're just kind of slowly leaning you into it and so see so you can so that when we have you do this later after you do all the hard work <laughs> when you have to do this at the end you kind of already got an idea about it okay so they gave us the answer they say this is the DE and this is the solution to that DE so whatever method they did to find that solution it's already been done okay Later, we'll figure it out, but for right now, it's done, okay? They've already found the general solution. They just want us to find the particular solution. And in order to do that, we have to figure out what C1 and C2 are. So we're gonna use our initial conditions. Now, they did give me Y, but did they give me Y prime to be able to plug in this one? They didn't, did they? So that's where our work is gonna begin. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is figure out what y prime is so that I can use that second condition, okay? I can use the first condition. I can plug in one and one for x and plug in three for y, and I'll get something. Let's see what that'll look like. So if I plug in three for y, one for x, one for x, and then one for x you get three equals C1. What is the ln of one? That's what my calculator tells me. ln of one is what? Zero. So if this is zero, what happens when you multiply it by one and then you multiply it by C2? It's just gonna be zero. So really the only thing I have here is that three equals C1 which is fantastic, that's awesome. I needed to know what C1 is, right? But I don't have enough information right now to figure out what C2 is, okay? And that's when the second condition is gonna come in. But we don't have Y prime, which means we have to find Y prime first. So if I wanna find Y prime, this is just a constant. What is the derivative of X? one so really the first term is just going to be c1 right this is also a constant however what's next to that constant is a product i have something with x times something else with x don't i so i have to apply the product rule whenever i try to take the derivative of that term so i actually have to do the first and then the second okay so the first times the derivative of the second, if you look in the front of your book, the derivative of ln of x is one over x, plus the second term, ln of x, times the derivative of the first term. What is the derivative of x? Just one. So if I clean this up, what do I get when I multiply this? One. And what do I get when I multiply this? ln of x and so this is y prime okay and now that I have y prime I can plug in my second condition values okay 
So the y prime itself should become what? This guy should become what? What value? Yes, it says y prime equals negative one, right? So this is gonna become negative one, and what is the x value going to become? One, okay? And we already did it in the calculator. What's the ln of one? It's just zero. So really, I have C2 times one plus zero, which is just C2, isn't it? Oops. Now do I have enough to figure out what C2 is? Yes. Yeah, what do I have to do though to get figure it out? Replace C1 with three. Mm -hmm. So negative one equals three plus C2, so then what will C2 be? Not two. Negative four. Negative four, because I'll have to minus three to both sides, right? To get the C2 by itself. It's real easy to make little mistakes. Very easy. But now that I have them, this is not your answer. Your answer is to find the particular solution. So you have to actually write Y with those specific C values. So this becomes three X, actually not plus, right? Because it's a negative. So it should be minus 4x ln of x. So all I'm doing is going back to the original solution and plugging in the c1 and the c2, right? This is what they're going to have in the back of the book, okay? They are not going to have c1 equals this and c2 equals that. Unless you're looking at the, stu the student solution method, then there they'll have them, but then they'll also have the final answer, okay? And your book will like jump to the answer. They won't do any of this. They'll just literally say this. This is what y prime looks like. It'll go from here, from all of that. It'll make the statement that y prime equals this. Then it'll tell you this means c1 equals three. This means c. This means this equation. And then those two together mean this. And then they'll give you the answer. They jump like big. So I like to break it down so you can see where all those pieces are coming from. So when you try to follow the, the student solution manual, you kind of have an idea of where they're going with it all. Okay. Now example two, it's kind of the same thing, except it's actually got three problems in one, doesn't it? Because you've got part A, part B, and part C. Okay. And so this one just basically wants you wants to know if these things are actually solutions or not. Okay. And you'll know, if you can solve for C1 and C2, then yes, this works, right? These initial conditions will yield a particular solution. But if the conditions do not allow you to solve for C1 and C2, then they don't, they won't yield a particular solution, okay? And it's important because notice that none of these have primes, do they? None of them. And before, we knew that if we had an initial condition for y and an initial condition for y prime, we could solve for c. As long as those are the same x values, you will be able to solve for c, the c1 and c2. But here, maybe, maybe not. Okay, we have to find out. Now, give me one second. 